And we're live. What's up, guys? How you doing? Hey, what's going on, man? So this is the third episode of the show that we're calling Gotham City Chronicles. And tonight we've got a special guest, Mr. John's Comics with Kids. Welcome to the show. Not so special. This show <laughs> is what's amazing. I'll tell you, like any show talking Batman, breaking down some of the best stories in Batman is like, yes, in. <laughs> I think it was. I think it, JP gets the credit for the genius idea of doing a Batman specific show, and I had the same reaction. I was like, "Hell yeah, I'll do that!" You know. You know, uh, <laughs> the one one series of stories that I really know. <laughs> it's like the ones I read, so more than anything else. So. Well, there's so I feel like there's so many, and maybe it's the DC Elseworlds design. There's so many great trades that you can buy. Of yeah. solid Batman stories. I mean, people have been, I, I, I saw year one all over the place, long Halloween. There's so many just great, you can pick up one and just be like, this is its own story. It stands alone. I can read it. Yeah. Speaking of uh, great stories, uh, tonight's story is pretty great. And it looks like you've got the full run back there. I, I thought I was special pulling out two issues from the run. <laughs> you've got the whole run behind I you. I try to decorate. Yeah, I've got the entire run and I have several <laughs> copies of certain issues. You know, like the finale, I think I have all the different color covers they did oh, for really? the, the nice. final issue. Yeah. And every once, like I was at a half price books and I saw this one for a dollar and I bought another co yeah. copy of this one. I don't think, I don't have the money to buy that. Uh, I don't have, yeah, well, I mean, I, I, never, I, I never come across that book. I mean, so we're talking about the the retailer incentive variant for yeah. When he's doing the pose on the gargoyle. Yeah, yeah, and which is the which is the cover like that they use on a lot of the trade paper. Yeah, books. yeah. But yeah. Uh, but that was I don't even know what the print run is. It's like a, what a few hundred. Got to be it's, like it's very low. Good. Yeah, it's real low. Print is I think or something. It was like a second print or whatever. Well, but the, the second print is a Jim Lee cover that's that has a higher print run. Oh. You're talking yeah. about okay. Never mind. I was. It, it is a it is a bigger sort of you know dollar yeah. value book than the first print. So right. the second print is a more um, I guess yeah. thought after book. But yeah. there's a um, there's a uh, a, re, a retailer roundtable book that that yeah. a nine eight copy oh, yeah. yeah nine eight copy for goes for uh, like four thousand yeah. dollars or something like yeah. that. Yeah, it's right. ridiculous. It's there's no almost none of them. It's crazy. Oh yeah, crazy. I'm happy. I just have the second print. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's yeah. the one that the com comic at eighty four has it slabbed, right? The second uh, print, yeah. I the second print. Slabbed, I can't remember. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's got the second printing slabbed. Yeah, mine will be back Wednesday, according to the shipping information, because oh, I nice. see it slabbed, so it's not here at the moment. All right. Well, I think we put the cart before the horse a little bit because we didn't even say that the name of the story is Hush. So <laughs> it's Hush. <laughs> and it was written by Jeff Loeb, of course, from Long Halloween fame. Uh, not Brian Azzarello, as I see it on my Instagram. <laughs> not Brian Azzarello. Uh, penciled by Jim Lee, inked by Scott Williams, colored by Alex Sinclair. So that's the story. It, it ran, what, uh, 12 issues, uh, Batman 608 to 619. So that ran in like 2002, 2003. Uh, of course, has been republished several times in in two single, in double volume and single volume, uh, hardcover and, pa and paperback. And th like this particular trade paperback where it's, it's one published in one volume, it's up to its 13th printing, I think. Wow. So it's pretty crazy. Um, so let's uh, just take a moment to acknowledge the chat a little bit. We got Perry Comics, Just a Recon, Ed D, Discovery Bay, JB, what's up? Uh, Pages Films and Plastics, uh, what's up, guys? Thanks for joining. Um, I'm assuming if you're here, you have Red Hush. So there will be spoilers. If this is a book that you, have, for some reason, have not read and would like to read and would not like to be spoiled, then you have been warned, uh, but uh, that's the only time we'll say it. Um, <laughs> so where do where should we start the conversation? I mean, this is a book that I've probably read it multiple times. Maybe, I, I don't remember exactly how many times I've read this book, but I've probably read it at least four times. I think uh, I've read it at least once a year since it originally came out. Oh, wow. It, you, you've got was, way more times on it than me. I, yeah. It was the, it was probably the comic the, the, the hero comic that got me back into collecting. Oh, wow. Like, wow. like, I was a big Jim Lee fan. I was a big, you know, year one and Frank Miller Batman fan. And so it was kind of like, what? Jim's going to do a full year on this? 
So I was there, I got issue one off the shelf, I bought it and then it was so good. I just, I just, I got a pull list and I hadn't had a pull list in mm. years. And I started, because of that, I started reading Vertigo books and stuff at the same time. My LCS was like, oh, you got to read 100 Bullets or you got to read Why the Last Man. And I got into all these other stuff. But it was it was just Jim Lee and and his unbelievable, like, I'm high water. I mean, I'm, a, I'm an X-Men fan, but this is, in my opinion, like, high watermark Jim Lee. I would agree that 100%. Perry Comics made a comment, isn't the movie coming out soon? I, I did hear that the, the DC anime, I saw there was like a trailer that dropped. Yeah, they just trailer. dropped the trailer this last when, weekend. When's it coming out for like for sale? Is it? Uh, June or June? July. Uh, yeah. I'm not for, like late June, early July, maybe somewhere in there, I think. So um, soon, in the next month yeah. or two, uh, it should be out. So you just made a comment about Jim Lee's artwork and I couldn't agree more. I like, I think we were talking a little bit before air and I was like that this is like Jim Lee, like comfort food. Like, for, you know, it's just every page, every panel, it's just seamless. You know, it's one of his most seamless works from, from front to back covers to interior pages, splash pages, double splash pages. It's just, it just bleeds Jim Lee. It's like, it's like the piece in the museum a hundred years from now that you would expect to see next oh, yeah. to Jim Lee. You know what I mean? It's There's it's, almost no page in here that you couldn't hang on your wall and have people gawk over. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and it, and it, and it kind of is, you know, that's kind of backed up in a lot of the critical praise and sentiment about this series. Like if you look at like the, the dust jacket of the hardcovers or you look at like the quotes on the back of the trade paperbacks, it's all about Jim Lee's artwork. Not much is said about Jeff Loeb's writing in this because that's where I kind of have issues. Like we can get to some issues later, but it, it, similar to my reread of long Halloween, when I revisit the story, I find like another thing I can sort of nitpick at every single time. <laughs> like, because, you know, the, the all important question of who is Hush starts to become, well, who isn't Hush? And then, you know, and then what was the point of some of the things that Hush, Hush did, quote unquote, depending upon which thing you're talking about? Yeah, I think I think they suffer from the same problem, right? You're talking yeah. about a big buildup of who the villain is going to be, and same, same, it can't possibly same. live up to the journey, right? Yeah. yeah. And draw it over twelve issues, which you know really means you're going to like really belabor that idea and draw it out. Um, it means that they have to leave a lot of possibilities open, even though ideally, hopefully, they've thought it through and they know who the villain is all the way through. So, who do they like? If you think about it, who do they tease along the way? Like they tease obviously, Jason Todd is like number Jason, one. Jason Todd. Uh, I think the first quote unquote because there's a lot of reveals in the story, like quote right. unquote reveals. I think the first reveal was that um, it was Harvey. Uh, Harvey Dent was yeah. Yeah. When, when when he's trying when he's getting Joker out of. A prison or where he's visiting Joker. I don't. Yeah, that's he's gonna be off for the yeah for the yeah. murder of Tommy Elliot or whatever. Exactly. Uh, then you've got you know Thomas Elliot, Elliot who ultimately so becomes Hush, but not. But it's still a little. There's still a little gray area there. Um, then you have the Riddler, who's kind of credited with Hush, but he's like not. He's the mastermind. Really yeah, 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 and then. Um, there's at least one more person. Am I making that up? Uh, Clayface. Clay yeah, well, Clayface does. Yeah. 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 So true. you kind of have five people sharing this character, and depending upon who you ask it, you know what part in the plot line, you know you can argue one way or the other. I mean, in 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 the graveyard scene where it's revealed to be Jason Todd, within the context of this Batman story continuity. I think you're supposed to be made to believe that that was Clayface, right? Definitely, because then and Clayface then, melts away, right? At the right. end, of that he melts away at the end of the right. fight. But then, you know, if you if you count this, if you look at this from the perspective of overall DC continuity, that gets retcon later by in Red Hood storylines, which which not all of those I have read, but in post New New Fifty Two Red Hood stuff, they retcon it and say that that actually was Jason Todd. Then how does he melt away? I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. So, like, there, there are things that DC has done in, in in retrospect to kind of, like, I guess, alter the initial intention of this story. So, so for that purpose, 
I have to look at it like now it's like it's a it's a standalone story like you know like it is a, like a, its own self-contained story because it was it wasn't originally intended to be but now that they've now that they've retconned it modern DC canon it kind of has become that so that's a little weird to me yeah you know well I, I would say for me I, I I always took it as it was all orchestrated by Elliot and that he has people standing in like Clayface does it in his uh -huh. portions but I never took it as other people were I, I took it as like he was in cahoots with all of these other people to make right. this all play out um and I also, I think at the time, everybody believed it was going to be Jason Todd, that they were bringing Jason back. It was this yeah. big thing. And and they were worried that the letdown was going to be a lot. And it was a little bit. People were hoping for Jason Todd. And then yeah. they felt like, well, now we got to bring Jason Todd back. Yeah, I can, honestly, I, I'm so curious about what that must have been like having gotten this series off the shelf. Because like I've never experienced it like that. It's always it was, it was like a, a month, like every month you were like, what's gonna happen? What's yeah. it gonna be like? Who's yeah. the villain? Because each 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 issue seems to pick a great Batman villain and bring them forefront and let them have their turn in the yeah. sun. And yeah. uh and so it was like, okay, well, what villain is gonna get their show next? Like when is the Joker gonna show up? When is Riddler gonna show up? Um, and so that part of it was kind of a fun thing, and then the the slow burn on is it going to be Robin? There's even that one panel where Hush is standing in front of like a Robinson's Brothers sign, but it's just cropped so that it says Robin right behind him. And everybody was like, "Oh, Easter egg!" <laughs> Easter egg. egg. First just foreshadowing. Yeah, right. It was so blown out of proportion. It was a big deal. To me, this was the maybe the storyline that I remember. Like John said, that I was collecting at the time, and like could not wait for the next issue more than maybe any other like storyline that I can remember reading. Like totally. I have to be there to get the. I was actually traveling from where I live now to Columbia to a comic book store to get them because I had already moved to where I didn't have access. Oh no! Right at the end, wow. like it just ended, is when I stopped collecting. Wow! Wow! And that was, you know, I. And I didn't, like, I actually missed the beginning. I didn't, like, the third issue was out when I picked it up, and I couldn't get issue one and two, so I only have. I like, saw that, because I got, I picked oh, one of those up because I love the cover. Yeah, the double issue. Yeah, the double feature is the only. Oh, that's cool. Uh, version of eight and nine. I don't have the original eight or the original nine. So I, have, I have the original 608. Yeah. And, and I have the original 611, uh, which I didn't pull out of my box. Yeah, I, but I do have a, the also have the original six thirteen, and I got this one signed by Jim. Ooh, Lee. Yeah. Oh, yeah, nice. So that's my favorite personal. We'll get to favorite covers later, but this is a, a, a spoiler alert. This is my favorite cover. <laughs> <laughs> you got the uh, but yeah, those issues were selling theater. so hot. Yeah. Six oh eight and six oh nine sold so incredibly well. Yeah, and then yeah. obviously the Superman cover later on. That they they released the first two issues in their like in a reprint almost uh, edition. You can buy, and I was like, I just I dug the cover. I loved the pose uh, that Batman's in there. When did that come out? When did that? And I love. I'm a Poison Ivy fan, so having her yeah. so front and center in these early it issues. About the time the fourth issue was coming out, I think okay. it was. Yeah, yeah, it was like right around the third or fourth issue, like when they reprinted that. Because I picked up the first the issue three, and I'm like, crap, this is not the beginning. And when I went back to get issue four, I think I got the double feature. Um, it's the way I remember it, but that's been, I've slept since then a couple of times. So. <laughs> <laughs> so we got a, uh, we got a couple of new people in here. Mr. Garrell, what's up? Always good to see you, buddy. And, uh, Gorilla Todd, comic book collector for life. What's up, my friend? How you doing? Hey, Gorilla Todd. Thanks for joining. So, um, yeah. So what about, uh, I think one of the things that this is most known for is the, the interplay, the, you know, the, uh, testing the waters with a real romance between, between Batman and Catwoman and, and how the audience would react to that or just how that would play. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I, I thought it played very, very successfully. I was like, the first time I read this story, I was like rooting for it so hard. Cool. For it. And I just felt, I felt, you know, I bought it, you know? I mean, when this, when you read that panel, like. I was opening up the exact yeah. same one. I mean, like, uh, I just remember being like, right? 
Yes. Yeah. And like, <laughs> I was not a big, um, like, Catwoman Batman relationship fan mm-hmm. for this storyline. Yeah. Like, cause I, I never felt that it worked. Like when they tried to write it a few times before that, it never felt like it worked to me. This is the first time I did. That I think is the strongest part of Jeff Loeb's writing in this story. It's yeah. like the, their dynamic right up until the end. <laughs> and yeah. Then, yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. Like, no, there's I, lots of great interplay. I think the way she yeah. takes shots at the Robins over the years, you know, I'm, she calls, she said at one point, I'm not your toy wonder. Yes, I um, love that line. It's a great line. Great line. And anytime anybody says like, "Oh, are you the new Robin?" she just loses her. She, I mean, she just like freaks. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, I, she 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 gets at. I think it's poison. I'm not uh, Harley Quinn says something about it at one point, and she Harley just rips the rips the half of her hat up to shreds with her claws. So cool. Ivy calls her Batgirl. I think at one point, and she doesn't <laughs> like that either. No. <laughs> So. I was talking to somebody once, um, it may have been RB3, I'm not sure, I forget exactly who, but they were telling me about, how, uh, like, I think uh, some of the original art from that issue, uh, like, it had come up in, like, the market on the underground market. Like, I can't even imagine how much that would cost. Oh, like, man. that panel, like, that, the KISS panel, like, that's got to oh, be God. one of the, in modern comics, that's got to be one of the most sought-after pages you know the one that I love is probably not the one most people love is it the when he's doing the watercolors. So oh, like this beautiful. this oh, panel yeah. with the green lamp, the old uh, is it Adam Scott? Yes, or Alan, Alan Scott. Scott. Alan, Alan Scott Green Lantern. I freaking love this panel. That might be my favorite. I have spoiler alert, I guess, for that portion, <laughs> but the whenever he's doing the watercolor memories, everyone everyone here has read it. I, I believe. I love the. No, I meant like if we're gonna do panels later, I give away mine now. But oh, no, no, go for it. This is those cool. watercolor memory bits when you get to see yeah. Bruce or Tommy when they were younger. I really dig that. They're, and that I really visual. like that. I really like the flashback setting. Yeah, that they had and the, the the look of them. You know that yeah. uh, the the whole sepia watercolor thing that he's doing there. And that, of course, that beautiful shot of Green Lantern just blasting through. So cool. So cool. Stay puff. Welcome, bud. How you doing? And uh, Jester Regan, thanks for stopping by. Go spend time with the wife. So, <laughs> you know, and why I think this to me is Pete Jim Lee is just, obviously Jim Lee is always about like super amounts of detail, but just the way he puts his panels together in this. Yeah. Like, one I'd forgotten about and like, like right off the bat in the early issues when he's fighting Killer Croc in the very first issue, and like you see the money drop, and like in the side panels, if you're paying attention, you see Catwoman steal the cake. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like even before Batman knows what's happening, and you actually see her like, I don't know if you guys if I can get it where to focus, her yeah. in the background there, like while he's fighting him before she ever steals it. So you know what's happening, and he just like he has all these details that just like throughout the whole story that I just love. <laughs> I just love his art. I think few people do detail, like high level detail like he does. And yet it's not busy. If that no. Well, that's, that was good timing there. Cause you just touched on the one thing that I have like a minor gripe about. The only thing that I have a minor gripe about with Jim Lee's artwork in this is his interpretation of Killer Croc. I'm not a huge fan of it. The mutated killer crime. Yeah, the yeah. mutated. I know, and they even list that as like a first appearance, like in like the key, like in like the key collector app and everything. It's like Batman six oh eight first appearance of a mutated killer croc. Yeah. So I mean, I, I I get where he was going with it. It's just my least favorite thing, is or my least favorite yeah. interpretation. Everything else is like in my mind, like mind blowingly stellar. That's my least, and it that you know, it's not long lasting because. You know, as you know, he he kind of gets what in the in the fir- within the first six issues he gets captured. I mean, yeah, and he he only he only appears in like two issues, I think total. Yeah, yeah. and they reference it as a plot point. You yeah, know, so that it was like you know they could retcon it away or they could add right. to it if they fans dug it or whatever. I didn't have a huge issue with it because uh, he's a he plays such a minor part, but like the battles, I like. I think Jason. The battles the, the the way that he cuts the panels together, like this whole bit when he when Batman's falling after his line gets cut, yeah. the way those pieces flay across one another and Batman's half in one shot and then he's out of the other one. And then, yeah, the detail work is just stunning. 
Tell, so let me let me ask you guys this: If you guys cracked your skulls, would oh, you geez. be able to do Morse code? <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't do Morse code with a healthy brain. <laughs> yeah, seriously, I, I I have no understanding of Morse code. That's wrong. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's kind of like I mean, it's it's a minor thing to like make fun of, but I I always remember that for yeah. whatever reason. I always take that part of the story away from me every time. I don't know. Um, but I guess that was subliminal because of the, the, um, what is it? Harold is it, yeah, they put a relay in to like basically put Tommy's name in, his in the computer program or whatever, like the flashes or whatever. And although I never, I, I never read the, the introduction of that character. I know he gets, you know, killed, killed off in this story arc. Oh, Harold, um, he gets introduced in, um, uh, during the uh, Cataclysm and uh, No Man's Land, I believe. Yeah, I don't think I've read that. It's introduced. Yeah. Is it the same guy in the animated series who takes care of the motor, the 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 the, the Batmobile? They have a great episode of that show where you get to see the garage where they fix the Batmobile, and the Penguin comes and like takes over. Same guy, yeah. Is yeah. that the same guy? I've seen that, but. That was the only other reference I had for a mechanic who works on the Batmobiles. So right. I was kind of like, I had in my mind at least, I had melded these two characters together. So I mean, that it's also interesting. I mean, the artwork's great, but it it's also interesting that in a way, Jeff Loeb was trying to sort of rewrite the history of Bruce Wayne's childhood because in a lot of other interpretations, they just you know they just overlooked the fact that he actually had a real human friend connection. Yeah, and, and and that was a new thing that hadn't really been part of canon before that. Um, I, whether it's still part of canon, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Somebody will use him eventually, I would assume. But yeah, yeah. Uh, well, you also get like the you know Bruce's relationship with his dad plays kind of a pivotal moment there Absolutely. with his dad. So you get some of that information as well. Um, and I thought that stuff was really interesting and kind of. Uh, powerful those sequences and i liked i actually liked the move to make it about the fact that you know like he was trying to assassinate his parents right you know that was pretty dark that's I twisted like, i was like all right that that i mean i wasn't expecting that the first time no the story no you know like okay this got this guy's got some real sadistic you know, motivation here <laughs> you know? So who, uh, who are your favorite Batman villains? Like, like which are the ones that, like, overall, not necessarily even in this story, but, like, just your favorite villains? Well, overall, mine is Joker. I know it's an obvious choice, but it's... It's, it's hard not it, to. It's my answer. And that's one of the issues I have with Jeff Loeb's writing is, is and especially in this story, is, is that the way Joker was kind of, in my opinion, he was kind of like, mm, I don't know, like... It was an afterthought. He was, yeah, he's, he was a real yeah. short yeah. sequence. I mean, it's, it's, really. it's not even that. It's just that the way that you have to basically believe that Joker would want to play like a, you know, like a, like a, like a minor role in a plot, you know, like yeah. I, you, you could trust him to carry it out. Yeah, yeah, I don't like. To me, it's like it's the opposite of the Joker character to like participate in like that kind of a plot. Um, I would have almost rather just him not been involved in the entire plot to some degree. I, although yeah. I really did like that, like the theatrics of that opera scene. You right. Know, yeah, that's with Harley in the issue before. Yeah. Actually, with Harley. Um, and, and I and I and I they I think even there's even some Easter eggs in there where like the name of the play in Italian, the name of the play that they're singing, which I forget the name off the top of my head, but the translation of the name of the play means clowns. So really? I thought, yeah, so I thought that was intelligent writing. And it's a real like Italian opera play. It's not like something that you made up. Um, so I thought that was pretty smart, uh, but yeah, I'm a little conflicted on the usage of the Joker in this story and whether I thought it really was the best use of the character. You know, I would agree with that because I feel like, to a certain degree, Jeff Loeb shoehorned several of these villains into the story to get yeah. Jeff to draw. <laughs> it was like, yeah. 
Yeah, let's have these in here. Let's have you know we got Jim Lee for twelve issues. I thought I thought Scare I thought Scarecrow being the one to control Huntress at the end was kind it's of too horned in. And that whole like scenario you know? to get him to the graveyard, like makes zero sense to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like a, a, how do they know they're following Catwoman, and so how do they know they could get Huntress to like cut her off and go directly there, and that Batman was following her, and the whole scenario there. Yeah, I think if you if you really dissect a lot of that stuff, you find a lot of like plot oddities. Yeah, <laughs> for yeah. sure. What's uh, up, Caleb? Comic Smurf. Good to see you, bro. Hey, Caleb. Oh, so Have you guys like, noticed that at the opera, there's a lot of like fun people in the crowd. I don't know. Like Jim Lee drew himself in there. Oh, are there some Easter eggs in there? I, yeah, like so. Like uh, I remember reading uh, like an annotated hush or whatever at some point. That's Jim drawing himself right there. Like, oh, cool. In, oh, yeah. in, and I want to say he says that most of the X Men are there. And no if way. you look closely, you can see certain members of the X Men scattered through the audience. Um, and I want to say he had Scott Williams next to himself there at the at the show. So but like that there are people scattered through that are like like you know whether they're like people who worked at DC at the time or people that he was friends with. Um, he was when he had to do those crowd shots. You might occasionally catch a pivotal uh, uh, person from Jim Lee. Is, is there any like content of him, of Jim Lee talking about this on the internet anywhere? Or is it? Like I don't know if it was in that or if it was as much as like a. Uh, a hardcover edition of this that uh, you know what it was. Uh, let me dig around and see if I can find it. There's a hardcover like history of Jim Lee yeah. thing. Ah, me, meanwhile, I, I want to read a comment here from Stay Puff. So he's saying unpopular opinion. He's not the biggest fan of Loeb's Batman work. Long Halloween was good, but not the classic people make it out to be. Dark Victory was too similar to Long Halloween. Uh, so I haven't actually read Dark Victory. It's on my list, and you know I. I'm I'm of the opinion where I, I actually I like Jeff Loeb's Batman work, but I liked it a lot more the first read through and every read through every subsequent read through of Long Halloween and Hush. You find more holes. Hush, I find more holes and I keep digging at it and I, it keeps gnawing at me. And they and we'll get to our rankings at the end, but but Hush dropped a spot or two for me. In preparing for this show long halloween dropped a spot or two on the last episode when we were preparing for that show so it's almost as if like i partially agree with that stay puff because they don't hold up to me on subsequent readings as much as the excitement of the noir and mystery on that first read through for, for yeah. a jeff Loeb book jeff Loeb batman first read through you're you're kind of like you're like in a trance because you're like you're all confused and stuff you know what i mean and like well, it's intentional and my opinion on that is he is really good at giving you these moments and both of the stories that are memorable and like, you're like, oh, like you, you want to see. Mm -hmm. But his interconnecting of those moments doesn't always make sense. <laughs> if, that, like, yeah. if that makes any, you know, like there's, yeah. there's so many great moments in this, but overall, when you really read through the story, like, the whole stuff with Huntress, they never really explained what the heck was going on there and how, you know. She had and, two cameos, basically. Yeah, she has two know? cameos, and yet she's important to getting Batman to a certain place. And there's just several things there, but it's like, why was Huntress wasn't even necessary to the story other than let's have Jim Lee draw Huntress fight Catwoman, <laughs> you know? Yeah, and to, and to Gorilla Todd's point, Jim Lee art was the driving force for the series. I think it, it drove the sales. Like I don't I don't know if I mentioned it, but the sales of the issue of issue one or or issue six oh eight rather first printing, I think from from Diamond to the comic shops at the time back in O two was a hundred thirteen thousand copies. Wow. So and that was probably when comics still hadn't really cut they you know, turned around. Back yet, yeah. They were in the doldrums and that issue helped, I think, you know, boost the marketplace quite a bit. Well, you know, and this, let's be real about some of what sold this is, you know, are these panels. Yeah, um, for sure. Yeah. Uh, yes. Poison Ivy and... Smoking Hot. Yeah. yeah. This pan, there's a couple panels of Huntress that she looks as good as she's ever looked. 
Yeah. I mean, and uh, Talia uh, Ghoul looks pretty damn good. Yeah, and as well. Eva looks like freaking amazing for her. And I mean, heck, there's even like a couple of you know Lois panels that are just like. <laughs> oh, there, there's a headlight shot of her oh, yeah. when Catwoman <laughs> drops her from the from the yep. thing or whatever. <laughs> yeah, there's a good shot. John, already find it? <laughs> yeah, so this is uh, Jim Lee, the Millennium Edition from Wizard Magazine. Okay. And this came out uh, right around the time uh, that uh, Hush finished and Jim was signed on to start doing Superman right. and with Azarello. And it, so it basically is like, it's got all the, every single cover he's done is in here somewhere. They do like a little countdown of all of it, whatever gotta, it is. Gotta, yeah, I got to track one of those down. And yeah. then... Inside, they have it's uh, they call it Hush the Director's Commentary, mm. and he oh. goes issue by issue to talk about what, what was going on, what his plans were. And Lee and Loeb and Williams are all interviewed at different points. But this is that panel that I was showing from uh, the, the opera, and he says this is the whole Wildstorm group that he works with over at Wildstorm. Yeah, his own, uh, his own studio. And, I know it's really going to be tough to see, but so they blew it up. But right up here in the in the audience is where the X Men are in the in the okay. crowd. Yeah, you can see Wolverine for sure if you look in there close. Wolverine's in there. Uh, looks like Rachel Summers maybe. I'll get a, as close <laughs> as I can there. You can kind of see what I'm what I'm talking about. Hush was so good. Even the X Men show up. That's awesome. Right. So it, it, it's a fun little read through and he talks about different panels and different things he really likes, but it's more just like a celebration of all that was kind of like fun about it. Not necessarily like mm -hmm. a deep dive plot solving kind of thing. Right. So I want to, I want to talk about collectability for a second. Go, go, go a little bit uh, of a, go on a little bit of a different conversation. I, so we talked about 608, like the, you know, they, they, there's 113,000 something or more possibly of the first printing. It's yeah. not a scarce book. It's a very popular book, though. Like, even yeah. for a book with that high of a print run, a CGC 9.8 um, just sold for, like, $90. So it's, it's, it's in that, like, $90 range. So if you can find some 9.8s out in the wild for a buck, two bucks, five bucks, and they're high, qual they're high grade, you can flip those all day long for, like, 90 bucks, 80 to 90 bucks which is pretty cool. Uh, the second printing, fair market value for a 9.8, um, which has that alternate cover that from, from Jim Lee where like he kind of looks like a gargoyle or whatever facing out to the left. Um, that that has a lower print run. I don't know the exact numbers, but it's um, it's got a fair market value of about $375. Woo! And it, it last sold for $450. So yeah, that, yeah that's, that one. that's that's the cover right there that JP is holding up. JP, say something. Okay, yeah, this is there. The so, yep. um, so while we're on this cover, I have or, or before we leave that cover, I want to do an antidote. Did you guys see? Do you guys follow Jim Lee on Instagram? Yeah, I think so. So did you see the little story he dropped about that cover this weekend? No, no, I did not. So he put on it was on Instagram, and so apparently he's only ever had one piece of commissioned artwork that the person was unhappy with and returned and asked huh. for a refund. And it is this cover. Are you kidding? Really? Me? The person returned it. It came back to him and his dealer was looking for somebody else to buy it. Well, in the, at that moment, they came to him and like, we need a cover for the second print. And he's like, well, let's just use this. So it was black and white, but he, so they had Alex color it and they used that for the second print, and then he sold it for twenty five hundred dollars oh to my a God. commission person. So it's gone. Like the original piece is gone. Wow. Like and he's like, how do you return that? <laughs> and, but so what the hell is wrong? The whole story is there. Go to Instagram. He dropped it Saturday or Sunday. Oh uh, yeah. That's like fate. Before we talk about this, I gotta definitely bring checking that out. That that's ridiculous. Yeah, it was, I hate uh, people sometimes. He's like, yeah, and how <laughs> but I guess we're the benefits of that, right? We yeah. now it's a published piece of art. He's but, like, uh, <laughs> most definite ninety nine. What's up, man? In the chat, he said uh, he thought he said twelve hundred, which is would be even more insane. Like, oh no, yeah, okay. I was thinking it was twenty five. I could be wrong on that. Crazy. Yeah, go read the the thing on Instagram. It's All crazy. right. 
Well, it's uh, it's not as crazy. Uh, I guess it's not as rare as that. But the <laughs> but the but the retailer in variant and var the retailer incentive variant, or I don't even know if it was an incentive variant or just literally like a low print retailer variant. Um, <laughs> that uh, that is currently selling for about thirty eight hundred dollars for a, a nine point eight of that cover. So that is kind of. That's the big boy book uh, that came out of this run is the is the Batman 608 retailer roundtable variant uh, low low print CGC 9.8 last sales at 3,800 bucks. So that's definitely yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. the one that's on the cover of our trades, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So that's that's kind of the uh, the grail of this run, if you will. Uh, that is, you know, it's out there, but. Um, with uh with the next issue 609 so that's the first appearance of thomas elliott who's later revealed to be hush now there there's some speculation on this issue because there's the animated movie coming out and there's also speculation that you know maybe hush will appear in the matt reeves batman script um you know because it's early days on that batman yeah uh you know movie in general and so there's a lot of speculation going on but uh the latest sale for a 9.8 of 609 was 140 dollars actually and you can find those they're out there's a lot of those out there because they I know. Them, I get they, one it's like oh yeah. yeah so if you find you can find batman 609s all day you know hopefully people haven't caught on to it yet but you know uh at this point hush has been around and it's 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 regardless of any movie speculation it's it's, it's a well-known story so people grab those issues up but um, but that is a good book to flip if that is your thing. So anyway, didn't want to spend too much time on that, but I wanted to work in a little bit of collecting and I wanted to check the uh, quality of my 609 right away. Yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Batman 609 right now and even 608, you know, if you can find them, they're good flip books. Yeah. I just, I can't imagine separating from this run. I don't, I mean, I've got the full run. I can't imagine selling it. I don't know. Yeah. I hear you. Yeah, yeah the, the only ones I'm missing from the full run is I'm missing the first print of 608. I've just never went back and bought it. And the Plenty first, of them out there to get. Yeah, the first print of 609. And then the only other cover that I would like to get that I don't have, I have for six, like 619 has four different covers. I have. Oh, you you're see breaking up, JP. The breaking two gatefold. Oh, there he is. There he but, is. That I cut you out up for a second. Yeah, cut out for a second. So yeah, I have the the two gatefold covers of six nineteen, but I don't have the second print Riddler cover. Mm. So, well, speaking of another cover, six twelve. I mean, you got the Batman versus Superman. I mean, that's yeah. that, <laughs> was a, <laughs> that was a big moment in this in this book in general, um, and that's also pretty awesome. And I remember at the time yeah. that was the cover that was hardest to find. Like this one sold out at my shop quickly, and the only reason I got one is because my LCS was pulling it for me. But he was like, I couldn't keep them. Like people wanted to buy five, ten of these. Like they wanted that that yeah. cover was the one. And obviously, it hasn't stayed the one, but yeah. that was the big one at the time. People Pretty just cool, love right? the art, pose, and everything. Yeah, that is, yeah. that is, yeah, the it's 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 a nice cover. Um, I also think the the Joker cover is pretty nice. Also, like the six fourteen, I think, or is it six thirteen? Uh, six fourteen or six fourteen? No, no, six thirteen is the one I have, the one that I love the most. Six fourteen is the six fourteen is the face being choked. Yeah, the Joker getting punched. So six thirteen is the one that I got signed by Jim Lee in the silver. But yeah. um, I, you know, it's it's a PA to cover. She's her. Yeah. She's technically kind of passed out uh, yeah. on it. So uh, I'll count it. But, uh, <laughs> Yeah, I would say. Do we want to just do that? To talk? Yeah, we're kind of at that point where we where we talk about our our picks. So favorite cover, favorite issue, storyline, and what yeah. and, and where do we rank it? So um, I I think I already made my pick. This is, I'm just gonna go with this one. Six thirteen. I like the Harley gun, you know, illusion thing there, and I like the PA to cover. Um, so it's my personal favorite. In this oh. I am partial to the 608 second print. Mm -hmm. uh, 
But I actually, I actually agree with you, Kavi. This is actually my favorite cover in the in the run. And, yeah, it's 613. Um, you know, when I first collected them, it was probably like the Superman Batman one, but like over the years, this is the one that I yeah the most. Um, I would say it is really close with 608, but I would put this one at slightly ahead of that 608 second print. Um, for me. Cool. So, Superman says he has a 609 error copy that he sent off to CGC. Ooh, what's the error? I don't know that I know there's an error for that. I didn't know either. Yeah, I didn't know. So, yeah, he has to tell us. No there. comic <laughs> misexplained. We're not. We're, we're definitely with you that there are definitely parts of Hush that we feel are overrated. Yeah, yeah. On the story yeah I don't, I don't, I don't know how much you've heard, but it hasn't been all love. On yeah, the, no. On the writing. Love is. There's the writing bit. is hard to get around, especially the 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 weight of all these plot points that kind of bog down believability a little bit. Um, but honestly, I rode through it all because I, I, for me, it felt like I was coming back to comics after a huge gap. I love Batman. I love his rogues gallery. And that's what it was, was like a, uh, a crazy roller coaster ride through his rogues gallery. Yeah. And see, that's the thing. Like I almost wish I had that experience of waiting between issues, like wondering about what's coming up next. Because I only have ever experienced this as a binge read. Like, sure. You know what I mean? And so every time it's a binge read. So it's a binge read the first time, it's a binge read the last time. And um, and and like I said earlier, like every time I just, it, there, there are plot points that, that annoy me more every time. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, Supremo Superman says some of the pages are out of order. So oh, okay, interesting. I know there was an error version of that. So that's cool. Um, I think for me, my favorite cover is probably the villain gatefold. Oh, yeah. cool. I, I just, I, this is why I read it. Like I was saying, the, the rogues gallery, getting to see them all together, Batman laying at Jason Todd's grave there. Um, I, I just love the whole view of it. And for me, that's what brought me into this was, yeah, I like Batman a whole lot, but it's the rogue gallery, you know, and, and even just the front panel where you're getting, yeah. Poison Ivy and Clayface, and it's just all super cool. Hush, of course, right there, yeah. holding the cape. Um, so that, I mean, I love the Raz cover, too. Yeah. Raz Al Ghul throwback to, reminds me of um, yeah, the one, one where he's stabbed in the chest, the old uh, the old cover where he's laying in the desert, and Raz is standing over him, and he's got the sword sticking out of his chest. It just yeah. feels so, like, you I knew ex you know exactly who the villain is yeah. when this issue yeah. when you see this cover. You don't even need to see him. You know, just the scimitar is all you need. I mean, they're also good. I mean, you could really pick almost anyone in the run, except for I think the Killer Croc cover, because <laughs> they yeah, like, <laughs> like, But like I, you know, I don't think it's as good as the villain one, but I love the the hero. The hero. Totally. Yeah, I mean, it is so it is so good. And I wish they'd done the whole thing in the red version. You know, the other was it. Uh, this printing that has the slight yeah. red coloring to it. I wish they'd done the because this just oh. has, as far as I remember, it's just this yeah, panel that's just of the three. The original A cover, I believe. So Yeah. Um, yeah, it is. So yeah, and it's just the one panel, but yeah, I, it would have been cool if they'd done the, the gatefold in the red. All right. I so think it looks better that way, personally. Favorite issue as far as storyline concerned. Favorite issue. Favorite issue. I think it's for me. Um, I think it is the showdown with Superman. Okay. I you know that whole thing where they're they're running and there's a line in here that I just love where he's talking to Catwoman as they're getting prepared to fight him, and he basically says. She says something about, you've studied Superman, haven't you? And he's like, he's the best at what he does. And she's like, that's open to debate. He says, he, I said, he's the best at what he does, not what I do. <laughs> and there's the piano with him in the ring. And I don't know. I just love that whole, that whole issue and how they like, basically, they know, he knows he can't actually beat Clark. He's relying on Clark to fight Ivy's control to not just kill him instantly. And they use... His human, they know that he's going to, like, all they have to do is make him save someone that he cares about, and he's going to break free. 
and just the way that Bruce knows him. And yeah, I just love that whole issue. Is that six twelve or yeah, that's six that's the, the Superman cover. Yeah. Yeah, that's six twelve. I gotta go with I think I gotta go with six ten. Six ten? Um as much as I, you know, made some comments about the killer croc part of part of, of the artwork. Right. Um, and it's I don't like that cover, you know, it's not my favorite cover. But that is the issue that ends on the panel with Bruce and 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 Selena and the kiss and and, right. the, and and I I just think that it's one of the most entertaining issues of a comic book that I have ever read. I also really like the the flashback stuff right um, yeah. in the middle of that issue. So um, for me, that's kind of the most like popcorn inducing issue for me top to bottom there's a lot of the book a lot of the issues in the book that i i like but that's probably as far as like the story and just a standalone issue that's probably my favorite one okay speaking of issues i got issues here oh hey, hello how you doing, Chris? Hey, in the chat i that's what about you john tough. it's a tough question it's, especially with this book it's a tough thing i i would probably go with just the very first one 608 i Good think one. I think I just I love there's so many sequences I love. I love when he's breaking into uh, the where the boy is kept hostage and you have all his 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 suit and thinking he's breaking down all the baddies he's going to get. You know, he's he's knocking them out in the way that he'll get to them first. I love the little boy who is a riot all the way through to be like scared of him and then cheering for him when he gets killer croc like that whole bit like it cracks me up. The chase across the rooftops trying to get Catwoman, his rope gets cut and he falls and is left in like basically crime alley at the end, the cliffhanger of that, what's going to happen to him. And then of course the reveal when you see Catwoman and Poison Ivy together and I freaking love Poison Ivy. That might be my favorite drawing of Poison Ivy. Yeah, it's, it's just everything. I don't know. Yeah. What do you like about that drawing? I don't know what it is about that drawing that I like. It's just uh, it's a mystery. Um, there's no anatomical logic to her, but I it's just phenomenal. Um, so yeah, like, I, I think it's hard for me to beat that issue, and it suckered me in. Everything about it was like exactly what I wanted it to be. Cliffhanger at the end, some new element. You know, okay, now we're gonna get Poison Ivy next week. This was a Killer Croc issue. Now I'm gonna get Poison Ivy. Like the setup and the play, the payoff was great, issue to issue, and obviously it starts strongest and finishes weakest. But yeah, like so for me, yeah, it's probably six oh eight. Least favorite issue. Well, issues. That's why I had to get extra copies. I have uh, two or three of six oh eight. I gotta, I gotta have my uh, keep my stuck together one separate. So I'll, I'll just state the obvious. I didn't. I thought the least, my least favorite issue is six nineteen. I mean, it's. I agree. It's I think it's hard to I don't know it's hard to choose any other issue for my like, favorite. Like yeah. I the I do not like the actual reveal of Hush and their little showdown on the bridge. Me neither. And Harvey and Gordon showing up. There's nothing about that that I think works. Um, in hindsight, I didn't remember it. Like like I remembered it being better than that. Um, the the reveal of the Riddler is good, um, and it, it really, but it really only pays off when Bruce turns the tables on him and is like, "Well, a secret everybody knows isn't worth anything," and like basically tricks him into like, if he tells people, then he no longer is like the smartest man in the room, uh, you know. And so he right. he he plays on Riddler's pride there in that moment to like get what he wants, and uh, but. But is that really good writing or not? It, I, I, I go back and forth in my head about it every time. Character that I like, though. Yeah. <laughs> and I really despise the way they end the Bruce and Catwoman thing because someday, he turns on her. Someday. someday. Well, he turns on her and stops trusting her for nothing. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's not like he has a reason. It's just like, it's just like, hmm, maybe you were trying to manipulate me. Now I don't trust you anymore. And it's just like, it makes no, like with where they've been through all these chapters, 
to turn it on nothing or to basically it's, turn it off on nothing. It's like it's like the Martha thing in Batman. <laughs> <laughs> Except it's like he, she says hush and now it's all over. <laughs> she says the word hush. Oh, and no. It's literally the Martha thing. It's you know, that whole chapter again, I feel like he basically told a story of how can I tell a story to allow Jim to show off? Yeah. Yeah. And then he got to the end and he's like, uh, we're gonna wrap it up like this. <laughs> and DC doesn't really want them together, so we're gonna break them apart. And at, yeah, that last chapter really just bothers me. So TJ Slab Dragon Watson's in the house. What's up, man? Happy birthday. This is Yeah, birthday. happy birthday, TJ. Happy birthday. So I get yeah, I get the 119 as the as the loser, but I and it might just be because I was reading, I was reading issues uh, month by month. Mm -hmm. The buildup of Jason Todd and what's it going to be, and the the at the end of six uh, seventeen, you get this splash page where it clearly looks like a new cool looking Jason Todd holding Jason uh, Todd Ghost Rider, yeah, right. <laughs> And he, he here he is. He's holding uh, the current Robin. Um, and now I've blanked on his name. But Tim Drake. Tim Drake. It was Tim Drake at the time, yeah. And so all of that was like a great buildup. And for me, this issue was very disappointing. Mm. And this is the the six eighteen. The previous. I mean, I, I saw this cover and I was like, this is going to be the greatest issue. Great cover. This cover's insane with the skeleton rotting Robin in the back. It's like, oh my gosh, the two giant eyeballs like hush his eyes. And it was such a letdown. To have it be Clayface after all of that, I was like, God damn it. Like, but I just was it though? It. But was yeah. it though? <laughs> yeah. you new 52 says that it might have been Jason Todd. I haven't read all those books, but that's yeah. what I hear. And then, and then it jumps quickly to you know Harold the 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 or is it Marvin the car guy at the very end, and then he gets uh, Harold, Harold seconds. Harold, right? Yeah, I don't remember. Yeah. I, don't remember. I think that was just Harold. weird. Yeah, the way the way they set that up to have to meet him on the bridge, and yeah, that just Harold. Yeah, yeah. And then it's like within two panel, within like two pages, he's dead, and we're off to like <laughs> this. Now we're here's the real hush, and I was like, no, no, come on, guys. <laughs> Yeah, well, six nineteen, at least for me, was like really just mopping up the mess of six eighteen. <laughs> <laughs> I, so, I think they were both disappointing. To me, the six nineteen, like, is slightly more annoying just just to me because of the whole Riddler thing. And yeah, I understand it's kind of nice to feel like there was a mastermind behind everything that that somebody that you're familiar with. But was it really necessary? No. A, and then B, was that really an acceptable like way to tie it up where you're like, oh, you know, now you know who that Batman is Bruce Wayne. So right. you're the Riddler. So only, you know, you wouldn't be comfortable revealing that information to the rest of the underworld. Like just because you, you, you're the Riddler and you're the only one, you, you know, you feel comfort <laughs> in the fact that you're the only one that knows that. Yeah. I, I don't know. Uh, I mean, like, I just, I like the moment, the way he uses him, but you're right. It doesn't work. It doesn't, like, it doesn't work. and it would have been so much better if they just made Hush the mastermind. I agree. I and, would have been, I would have been more content with the overall storyline if it just, if he, if, if it was, if, if, if it was just Tommy Elliott and Hush. And, and, and I took, I honestly still take it kind of as that way, as him manipulating Riddler to do what Riddler wants, like, yeah. you know, that, that he was using Riddler and that Riddler felt empowered by it so for me i took it as like riddler was just a uh you know a, a high placed pawn in the game uh, so that's how i've always taken it um but it's still frustrating yeah. I, and for me though yeah. the, it was the and reading it week month to month at the time just seeing all that build up so here's robin you see robin and then in w one issue it's like stripped away to mean nothing i do feel like though the reaction to that chap that and maybe that's why it's not my least favorite is the reaction to that issue and what happens there, John, directly led to them actually bringing him back. Yeah. I, I think that actually, like, I feel like it did have a good consequence because <laughs> everyone was so pissed that it wasn't actually him. Right. Like, it did 
like finally put them over the edge to actually bring Jason Todd back. Um, which, is, which is how they can net retcon it and say that yeah. it was him. <laughs> like, you know. <laughs> Which that doesn't make any sense at all. No, that makes no sense. <laughs> <laughs> Stay puff is saying you're making me not like the story again because you're speaking the truth about it. Many people I talk to. Well, think here's the it. thing. I, I think it is. I mean, I think it is a great story, and and we're we're doing a series of what we consider great Batman stories. So we're trying to we're trying to be scrutinized a little bit to, yeah. to, you know, to put them somewhere in our overall rankings, which is, I guess, where we're going to get to next. Is it I mean, I will say, and I'm a, I'm, I like, I love Frank Miller, love year one, uh, David Mazzuccelli, uh, uh, but I, this is probably the greatest drawn Batman story ever. Like I, I can't sure. think of a better drawn story to the finish. Yeah, so, I would agree. As much as you might really be frustrated with the plot points and the, and, the, and, the, and the confusing layers that don't make a whole lot of sense, it's oh. hard to argue against just stellar art. Not only just the way it looks, but panel to panel, like JP was saying earlier, the way it flows, the way the fight mm -hmm. sequences play into one another. And yeah, Jim Lee, he's hard on a timeline. And, and you know, the last few issues aren't playing as perfectly as the first few, but it's it's top notch art. I mean, maybe the greatest. I think probably the greatest Batman drawing series that I've read. Biggie Shack, what's up? Um, I agree with you one hundred percent. If if we're doing my ranking, if we're doing the where does it rank based on artwork, I also put it at number one. Yeah, me too. If it was just based on the art, it would be number one. Um, and you know, we're we're picking it apart. Is it still a lot of fun to read? Yeah. Absolutely. It's just not as well a told story as I remembered it being. <laughs> I'll be perfect. Yeah. I didn't remember, you know, I my memory, and I told you before I reread it for this, it had probably been oh at least six or seven years since I'd read it. And it was yeah, I didn't remember some of the holes. They were just like, and as I was rereading, I was like, what? <laughs> and then yeah, I mean, I read it last year at some point. Um, it, it's a book that I try to read regularly, but yeah. I don't know. I don't know the literal total amount of times I've read it. Definitely not as many as John. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I want to say this is the second trade I've owned of it too. This, like is, I, the second, this is the second trade I've owned. I burned of. through one already. Yeah, I burned through one. Um, I for 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 the three stories that we've done. I've burned through trades, uh, previous copies, and have bought new copies that are nice, you know. Yeah. Um, so uh, where I put it overall, art, storyline, everything, I, I I put it just outside of my top five. Like it's got to be like in the seven, six or seven spot for me right now. Without naming all the other books, that's approximately where it lands for me. Yeah, depending would... depending upon you know what I've read latest. From the ones that I think I like more, more, um, it, may, it may move up a spot or whatever, you know. But like that's kind of it's in the five to seven range for me overall. Are you talking of like strict Batman stories or any story that is like Batman, Batman story in it? Batman, any Batman Gotham City universe story it doesn't necessarily okay. have to be straight. Okay, I mean, I, I'm yeah, I'm just trying to think through my favorite. Yeah, it would definitely be in that I think five to eight range somewhere. Yeah. I think um, yeah, and somewhere in there is where it ultimately. Like, if you'd asked me before we started doing this, it would have probably been, it would have been my top three. But having right. read it now, it's like no, it's probably six, seven, eight, somewhere in there. It's, um, it's. I mean, it. I never keep like a real official ranking, so this is all like yeah, completely, yeah. Fluid, completely fluid in my head. But it's probably been as high up as top five for me, but not solidified in the top five. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like there are things like I need to read Court of Owls again. You know, it's been a minute since I read that, so I want sure. to read that soon and see where see see what a reread of that where that you know ends up in my head. So, you know, there it is. Well, um, speaking of, uh, we haven't actually like talked about that, but that was kind of the next one we were yeah to. So um, yeah, I'm down to read that one. I don't know what I well we'll have to. To, to sync up and figure out a, a date date and time and whatnot, but I, I, I'm down to reread that one. It's been on my list to reread for a while now. Yeah, we'll talk about whether or not we want to do 
just the first part or we want to do the whole thing through the night of owls and how we want to do that how many issues was the how many issues is that if you go through the night of owls it's two trades it's like two trades over 13 and it depends on whether or not you read all the like tie-ins for the night of owls too right yeah night of owls crossed over all the batman titles so it's kind of a it's a big a little bit of a mess in order to try yeah. to collect and read but um if you just stick with Batman itself, I think it's 12 issues because I think 13 started Death in the Family. That's yeah, right. yeah, so. that's right. Um, mm. Yeah, I guess so. You know, I'd be fine with just doing the first volume also. It depends, depends on how much time we're giving ourselves. Which, yeah. You know, uh, uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, we'll have to decide how long we're going to be. So. If, we're, if we're talking about, like, next Monday night, then just the first volume. Two to three weeks. So, and I didn't yeah. know if we'd be moving. Like, we'll, we'll talk off for... Yeah, you know. we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. So, um, go ahead. Well, thanks for joining us, John. It was fun, man. Well, Glad to do it, man. I'm absolutely pumped to talk about it, man. I even picked up, uh, I was talking to you guys about uh, the Gotham Central. The I picked that the, up also. The, the, Alex, so I, Alex, I, like, I got to read that. that Alex, Alex, on, like every other video, yes. Yeah. Right? I don't get to read that either. So. So that one, that one I got on free comic book day for, you know, 50% or whatever off. Uh, it was a great, a great trade to grab for that price. So I'm excited to tear through that one. Um, Hopefully that that makes the top five. Although I don't think Batman's in it very prominently. Yeah, I mean, I want to do Death in the Family also because that's currently in my top five. Um, and, but it has been a minute since I reread that one. Also, yeah. so it could get knocked out. You know, we'll see. I want to do like I do want to do uh, White Knight before the sequel summer, um, because I do. I, I haven't read that at all, so it'll be my first reading of it. Yeah. It's a good one. Yeah. Yeah, I want I want to redo because I I think it starts in July, so we got a little bit of time. But I think okay. maybe, I have the trade. I have the trade. I just haven't gotten around to it. So, but there's so many there's so many good Batman stories. Yeah. You know, so, uh, anything else you guys want to plug, John? Uh, well, we got book club on Wednesday night. We're gonna be doing um old comic book day book club because we don't like the books that are coming out this week uh we couldn't agree on anything so we're going to be doing uh wolfman and perez new teen titans issue one ocbdbc yeah i i have ocd about it i can't OCD, remember BD, CD. <laughs> so we're going to be throwing back trying something different i know uh we struggle on those weeks when the pickings are slim so we kind of just decided like we've done you know, top favorite, you know, of the month videos we've done. Yeah. Uh, hey, here's a run that nobody's talking about. And I think this time we were like, let's just go out and do something totally wacky. And I have bought the trade and hadn't started reading it. Alec just bought issue one. He got it in an auction, I think. Right. So we were like, let's let's give this Wolfman Perez a shot. Please. And then I got a whole bunch of unboxings that I'm due to do. I started, <laughs> I got a great A-OK -okay from that guy sitting next to you on this show. Nice. So it's sitting right down here, but I might have to do a special unboxing just for that one. Maybe on the Saturday morning comics or something. Um, and then I've been, yeah. I've been, buy all the stuff that's in it. <laughs> right? <laughs> and then, um, and then I've been, uh, I've been uh, waiting on boxes from auctions that have been going on lately in the, in the community. And, uh, I, you know, I bought something from Comic Smurf and he's shipped it twice and it's come back to him two times. Oh, so, no. Yeah. I thought it was lost forever and then it popped back up on his doorstep. I think he's, I think there's a late, uh, miscommunication in the address. So hopefully I, I, don't I literally it. have nothing to unbox lately. I feel, I feel like I need to come up with more show concepts to do like this because, uh, because I'm like, I don't have anything to unbox. I can't make any content. Oh, I've hardly un been unboxing anything lately. Um, I don't have anything. I'm I've just been doing the live streams and the occasional edited video, and it's like, but then this, the, they they pile up. You know, you order something off eBay, and then you got five or six little something. Well, I have this baby box to unbox. Oh Ooh. wow! That is that's my supply order. So okay, okay. Gotcha. I ordered a bunch of supplies for Max Protection. That came today, which. I ordered that on Wednesday night, and then wow. today. So I was a little surprised. It was supposed to be here tomorrow, is what like FedEx said, and then suddenly it was like out for delivery. And I was like, "What?" So, so I got to open that, and like I'm gonna do some organization of my collection at some point. And then I have a 
eBay box here, but my uh, I'm going to wait on it till my CBCS order from PlanetCon is supposed to be back Wednesday. Okay. So I will unbox that. It's killing me not to look up the grades. <laughs> 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 I've never done this before, and it's like, oh, they sent me the email today, and I'm like, all I have to do is click on that, and I know what it is. Yeah. Now, when you first do it, it's it's really hard, but the more you do, you'll get used to it. Yeah. Get used to and it. I need to check because I need to check and see where the status is on my CGC order from Planet. Um, because D Runk has got his coming back to him, so I need to call and see what the what's going on there because it, we went through that third party, so it's hard to know when it's coming for sure. So, right. right. But so I got those, and then I'll have top ten will be back this weekend, and yeah, I don't know beyond that. So. Cool. Uh, Biggie Shack said, NYC, you got tons of books. Well, yeah, I need to do a better job of making content with the books I already have, like, yeah. like repurposing my own collection to create content out of it. I just, I have, I just, it's just been, you know, it's easier to just like, hey, I got a box. Like, <laughs> here it is. You got no boxes. It's like, oh, what do I do? Um, I, so I've got Direct Edition Squad Sunday nights on the, the separate channel every Sunday night. Um, we'll be on again, I think, this Sunday, Memorial Day weekend, I think. I don't know. I haven't, chat, I haven't chatted with the rest of the crew. It is a holiday weekend, so you never know. Things might change. Um, other than that, I think this is going to be the last video on my channel. Uh, not ever. Uh, for a minute because I'm gearing up to move in a couple weeks probably. So I've got a lot of shit to figure out. I got to move my whole collection in addition to my whole life. So it is going to be hairy. And, yeah. um, you know, there will be a comic book corner in my new place. Nice. Which will be a cool, you know, project for me to work on to both have everything organized and displayed and, have it be behind me in some capacity right. uh, on video also will be a, will be a project. So, um, so that should be fun. So it, it'll take me probably a few weeks, uh, you know, to move and to then all from there to also figure all this stuff out. But uh, I'll be back on my channel eventually uh, at some point, but for, for now, I don't, if I do go live between now and then on my channel, it'll be a completely random times for random reasons. So there it is. All right, guys. Thanks, everybody, in the chat for showing up. We appreciate you talking Batman with us. Uh, and until next time, uh, no, this is not a Star Wars show, so I won't say May the Force be with you. I don't even know what to say for a Batman show. Uh, <laughs> good night. Bye.